A public defender is an attorney employed by the community and responsible for giving legal aid without cost to any person who seeks it and is financially unable to employ private counsel. It is his duty to defend those accused of crime until the issue is decided in a court of law. The first public defender's office in the United States was opened in January 1913. Over the years, other offices were opened. And today, that handful has grown to a network. A network of lawyers cooperating to protect the rights of our clients. This is the story of a boy who set a camera trap to get a picture of a small, harmless animal. What he caught was something much bigger, a murderer. When Gary Johnson, young naturalist and wildlife photographer, checked his camera the next day, he knew his trap had worked. He didn't know how well. Sanders, something awful has happened. It's, it's Miss Bascom. What about her? I found her over in the park. She's... She's dead. Dead? Are you sure? Come on, quick. I'll show you. We'd better notify the police. Did you know this girl? Yes, I... I knew her. We were engaged to be married. Had you set a date yet? Oh, not exactly. You see, I... I've been a little financially strapped, and we've been putting it off. Mm. You didn't happen to be with her last night? Yes, I, I was with her. We went to a movie, and then afterwards it was such a nice night that we decided to go for a drive. That's interesting. Where did you drive to? Well, we, we, we drove through the park here. You'll have to come with me, Mr. Sanders. What for? I think the captain will want to have a talk with you. Mr. Sanders didn't do it. He couldn't. Why couldn't he? He just couldn't. He's the best teacher in school. He's my best friend. And he wouldn't hurt anything or anybody. Thanks, Gary. You'll probably have your chance to tell all about Mr. Sanders later, in court. All right, let's go. At the preliminary hearing, I was appointed to defend Sanders. He couldn't afford private counsel. Now, Gary, exactly what happened the day you found Miss Bascarati? Well, sir, I collected some insects, and then I checked my camera. You see, I was trying to get a flashlight picture of Procyon Lotor. Now, that's a raccoon. <laughs> Do you always use the Latin or scientific names? Oh, most of the time, sir. Uh, Mr. Sanders, our general science teacher, says it's the best. Did you get the picture, Gary? I got something, all right. Of course, I couldn't tell what it was at that time. But I knew that some animal would grab the bait and set off the camera and take it in its own picture. It's neat the way it works. I learned the trick from Mr. Stone. Will you tell us what happened next? Do I have to talk about that again? I've already told everything. The judge wants to know, Gary. And then Gary told of his frightening discovery. The next witness was Howard Stone, owner of a camera shop, a friend of Gary and his advisor in wildlife photography. He didn't seem to relish what he had to tell. Yes, uh, I saw them together that night. Where? In Sanders' car, just before they turned into the park. Now, do you remember what time that was? Yes, it was around the 10.30. Did you speak to them? No, I called and waved, but they didn't seem to notice me. Why not? Well, they, they seemed to be preoccupied. In what way? Well, I, I couldn't be sure, but... I thought they were arguing, quarreling. That's not true. We weren't quarreling, Howard. Well, maybe I got the wrong impression. Uh, I'm awfully sorry I said anything, Ralph. Mr. Stone, Mr. Sanders, you're out of order. 
do not address each other. As a result of the preliminary hearing, Ralph Sanders was held for trial on a charge of murdering his fiancée. I, I don't understand it. Why should he say we were quarreling? Could he have had any reason for lying? No, that's what puzzles me. We've always been good friends. Was Stone a friend of the Bascom girls, too? Yes, and he knew her before I did. In fact, he introduced us. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, Howard and June used to go together. Oh, I guess I should have told you that before, Mr. Matthews. You should have. What happened to that romance? Well, I'm afraid I did. It was just one of those things. Sometimes those things can be quite important. Oh, no, no, no. It's nothing like that. Howard's a right sort. He's a, he's a good loser. Right sort? Well, Howard Stone and I are different. I'm not a good loser. Yes. I'm Bart Matthews, Public Defender's Office. May I ask you a few questions? Oh, I certainly. Is anything wrong? No, oh, nothing to be alarmed about. Do you have a tenant named Howard Stone? Oh, yes, indeed. He lives right across the hall. Well, do you know him personally, anything about his habits? Oh, of course. I make it a point to know all my people. Mr. Stone's awfully nice, quiet, regular with his rent. He runs a camera store in town. Yes, I know. Uh, did you see Mr. Stone on the night of the 16th, last Friday? Friday? Friday. Oh, that's the night I was reading such a good book. <laughs> Mad Love. I just couldn't put it down. And I'm usually in bed at 9.30. Yes, but... As I said, I couldn't put the book down, so I did hear Mr. Stone come in. Do you remember what the time was? Well, let's see. Anthony had just grabbed Caroline and pulled her toward him. When Mr. Stone interrupted, I, I mean, he came in. I see, but do you remember what the time was? Yes, I glanced at the clock. It was 10.30. Well, that checks. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, Mr. Matthews. Yes? There was something else that happened that evening. I don't imagine it's important, but it was a little unusual for Mr. Stone. And what was that? Well, as I said, I couldn't put the book down. So I did hear Mr. Stone go out again around 11 o'clock. I suppose he forgot some cigarettes or something. And did you hear him come back in again? No, no, I didn't. Shortly after that, I finished the book and went to bed. Thank you, Mrs. Dennis. You've been very helpful. No, not at all. I set out for the home of Gary Johnson, the boy who found the body. Gary wasn't home. But his mother rather proudly showed me the quarters of the budding young naturalist. It's Gary's bedroom, but also his dark room, laboratory, and museum. I can't tell you when you'll be back. You know how boys are. Well, it's not important, Mrs. Johnson. I just thought that Gary might have overlooked some detail that might help. Uh, do you mind if I look around? Not at all. Gary does all right with the camera. Getting good animal shots isn't easy. He works hard at it, and he loves it. That's his latest role, drying. It's a nice squirrel picture. And the snap turned out fine. <laughs> Gary's becoming quite good at it. Mr. Stone has helped him a lot. You know, Gary testified at the hearing that he took all of these pictures at the park. I believe he did. I think I'll be going now, Mrs. Johnson. I'm sorry Gary wasn't here. Oh, it doesn't matter. That boy spends all his spare time and some that he shouldn't spare out in the woods studying animals. I actually think he likes the animals better than he does people. Well, sometimes, Mrs. Johnson, they're better than people. <laughs> Oh, 
this is Bart Matthews. I'd like you to look up an auto license for me. 2N202. Yeah, that's right. Thanks. Yes. Same here, Gary. I thought I'd drop by and see how you're doing with your photography. Your mother out? Yeah, Mom's gone marketing. Hey, come out of my room. Think I got some good shots. I'm anxious to see them. It sure took me a long time to finish shooting that last roll. They turned out swell. Fine, fine. Which one is the picture taken in the park that night? You know, the one you told the judge about at the hearing. You know Prosky and Loder, the raccoon? Here. Isn't it a peach? Mm, nice work. Sharp definition. Thanks. Sure lots of fun. I told you it would be. You can get much more from a camera than you can with a gun. And nothing or nobody gets hurt. Beta trigger trick worked just perfect. It came out real good, didn't it? What? Oh, yes, excellent. The raccoon sort of caught himself in the act. What's the matter? A raccoon, uh... Hey, I didn't see that on the negative. Why, I can read the license number. 2N202. The raccoon took a little more than his own portrait. Too bad. Is it? Why? Because a car in the background spoils the effect. Takes away its natural woodland atmosphere. Gary, this shot could have been a prize winner. Gee, that's a shame. Has anyone else seen this picture? No, I just printed it this morning. Where's the negative? Right here. That'll be very simple. We can take it down to the shop and retouch the car right out of that picture. Then you'll have a real chance in the photo contest. Come on, let's go. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Stone. I have to do it myself. The contest is for amateurs only. That's right, I forgot. Well, at least I can show you how it's done. That'll be ethical. Sure, Mr. Stone, that'll be swell. If I could win the photo contest, I'd be the head guy in our class. You sure you can spare the time to show me how to fix this negative? Sure, Gary. I've got all evening. And, uh, well, you're my favorite pupil. Gee, Mr. Stone, thanks a lot. Forget about it, Gary. Come on, let's go down to the shop and get the job done. The sooner, the better. I'll take care of that. The boys must have been pretty busy. It took them a long time to run down that car license number. It was nearly six, and I was almost ready to call it a day. Matthew speaking. Oh, yes, Joe. What? Stone. Oh, never mind the address. I've got it. License number 2N202 was registered in the name of Howard Stone, ex-boyfriend of the murdered girl. I lost no time in getting to his place of business. Sorry, we're close for the day. Has Mr. Stone left? Why, yes, yeah, some time ago. Oh, I'll get him at home, then. I don't think he'll be home. I think we're over to see a young friend of his, a kid by the name of Gary Johnson. Is it important? It is important, thank you. Now, I was really worried. If Howard Stone saw his license number in Gary's picture, anything could happen. get things set up for us. Oh, this is going to be keen. I've always wanted to learn about retouching. Just a second, now, and I'll show you how it's done. Let me have the pictures. Hey! There's no good. We'll print plenty as soon as we get the negative fixed up. Oh, that's right. I forgot. 
Sounds like TNT. Now, never mind that. Here, let's start with this edging knife. Yeah. Have to work very carefully. Before we're through, we'll make that car get lost just like magic. Mr. Matthew. Good evening, Mrs. Johnson. Have you seen Gary? No, I haven't, and it's almost dinner time. Well, do you have any idea where I can find him? No, I haven't. Is something wrong, Mr. Matthews? No, nothing. I was just anxious to find Gary. Oh. Have you seen Mr. Stone tonight? No, but I've been out most of the afternoon. Gary's forever late for dinner like this. But he might be at Mr. Stone's apartment. Sometimes he goes up there to show him pictures. May I use your telephone? I'll call him. Yes, right over there. Thank you. Hello, information. I wonder if you'll get me the telephone number of Howard Stone, Majestic Apartments, 7th Avenue. Thank you. Say, that's pretty good for a beginner. Thanks. It's fun. Kind of hard on the eyes, though. And the fingers, too. Mm-hmm. Yes, retouching gets rid of many unpleasant details, like double chins. But you're not quite through. Okay, I'll finish it. And then can we make some prints? I'm dying to see how it comes out. Why not? When you finish, you'll find the paper in this drawer. Cut as many as you want. I'll mix up the soup. I can't imagine what's keeping Gary. Does Mr. Stone call on Gary Elton? He's been here several times to help him with his photography. What's the matter? You seem to have Mr. Stone on your mind tonight. I have. Gary, too. Do you mind if I take another look at his room? Well, not at all. Just like it was this morning. Looks like Gary's been home since I was here this morning. He's taken his negatives down. I haven't noticed. I haven't been in his room since I got back from Marcus. It's gone. I don't like this. Mr. Matthews, is Gary in trouble? I hope not, Mrs. Johnson. I hope not. <laughs> Sergeant, Matthew speaking. Put out on all points on Gary Johnson. Age 15, height about five feet, light brown hair, blue eyes. Right, Sergeant. I'll wait here at the Johnson home. Oak 2411. Thanks. Gary. It's a little underexposed, Gary. We'll have to give it a little more time. But you did a good job. You really lost that car. Oh, gosh. Didn't know it was so late. Mom will be worrying. Okay, we'll make the prints some other time. Oh, no, I'm anxious to see him. I'll call Mom and tell her to keep something warm for me. But don't bother her. We can do this anytime. I'll take just a second. Be a little late. Down with Mr. Stone in the shop, making some prints. Oh, thank heaven. Mr. Matthews is here and wants to see you right away, so come right home, Gary. Okay, Mom, I'm sorry I worried you. I'll be right home. What? Oh, yes, Mom. Bye. When 202. He's all right. He's coming. 
coming right home. Where is he? I should have known it would have something to do with pictures. But where is he? Well, he's, he's busy with some darkroom work at the shop with Mr. Stone. Stone? Well, two oh two. Everything all right? Yes. I mean, I don't know. Two and two oh two. license number on the negative. Remember? Yes, I remember. I just noticed your car license. The number's the same. You're very observing, Gary. Well, then, it was your car in the park that night. If your car was there, you must have been there. Then you did it. You killed her. And I know why. Why, Gary? You were jealous because she was going to marry Mr. Sanders. Sanders was released after Howard Stone's confession. And Stone was convicted of murdering the woman he couldn't stand to lose. A strange, the unexpected help our office got in trapping a killer from a boy with a hobby and from Procyon Lotor. <laughs> That's a raccoon. Now, the case you have just seen was brought to a fair and just conclusion through the efforts of a public defender.